Hey there planners, today I wanna to give you an update on what I'm doing in the area of faith planning. I've got a few different tools that I'm gonna be using for the month ahead and I've started playing around with and I can't wait to share those with you. So go grab your planners and let's get planning. So as you all know, I moved to digital planning uh, in 2022 and really doing all my planning digitally, work planning, personal planning, faith planning, all of the things in my digital planner. Uh, this is my iPad 12.9 uh, iPad Pro and uh, this has been a fantastic transition for me. I am really enjoying digital planning. Uh, and, and just the functionality, the portability, all of that. If you want to learn more about why I went to digital planning or how I'm using a digital planner, I'll have several videos linked down in the description box below to learn more about that. One of the areas that I did move to digital planning was my faith planning, which typically consists of a monthly calendar where I capture scripture reading as well as gratitude and then also some journaling pages, uh, prayer pages, um, just things like that. I have been doing that digitally uh, for the month of January and I kind of ran into a problem. The problem for me is that when I am in this iPad and I am in my quiet time, I am also getting email notifications, YouTube notifications, Instagram notifications. I'm getting all of that coming through on the iPad. Now I know I could take the time to go turn it all off, but at you know 5 a.m. in the morning, which is when I get up to have my quiet time, uh, I'm not taking the time to do all that. I wanna get right into the Word. And what really convicted me about this is a book I'm reading that I talked about in my January uh, goal setting. I'm reading a book called The Well-Watered Woman. Um, it is absolutely wonderful. And um, there's a whole section in there about putting the word before the world and really making that a priority in whatever space and time that you can give uh, just to start your day with the word of God uh, versus hopping right into social media and emails and work and all of that stuff. And I was finding that increasingly difficult to do in my digital planner because everything is here, which is the benefit of digital planning. It's all in one. I just have this one device, this one thing that I need to carry around with me. But for the purposes of my quiet time, it was actually hurting me. So this sent me on a little bit of a search for how could I fix the problem, which is where I introduced two analog systems, new analog systems to help me with my faith planning. So I'm going to start with this one first. I have been, for the past probably five or six months, doing really deep dive word studies where I'm taking a single verse and I'm really diving deep into that verse and, you know, verse mapping and using a concordance and really spending the entirety of my quiet time in the morning focused on that one verse. I also wanted to make a little bit of a shift from that. I did a great uh, verse verse a day study in January. Again, I'll have that link down in the description box below. But I, at the end of that, I really wanted to transition back to more um, broader, you know, chapters, reading, uh, kind of pulling back a little bit and seeing a larger picture. I also am finding myself really getting into studying the cultural and historical context, um, not just the language and the words, but the context around the language and the words, and it's really helping me get a deeper meaning and understanding of what I'm reading. So in order for me to study that way, I needed space to write, and I thought, you know, I had in my Bible, which I've had forever, and I'll show that to you, this Bible in this what is now a very ugly cover is a Bible that I have had for uh, pretty much my entire adult life. I've had this Bible since I was uh, baptized when I was about 14, 15 years old. Um, and this is just, you know, this is my Bible. This is my go-to. It's been in this cover since then too, which the reason I still have this cover, which the zipper is broken on, um, is because I think if I pull this cover off, it will actually pull off the, the cardboard, the hardcover of the Bible. It's molded together in some way. So anyway, this is, this is my Bible. And as I flip through this Bible, and I'll just show you, there are underlines and highlights uh, everywhere in it. And 
you know, I, at this point, I don't really know why I highlighted that. I mean, it was important to me when I read it, but I don't know why I highlighted some of these things. I don't know if their color means anything. I've just had it for so long. Um, and, you know, s underlining and starring things, I've had it for so long that, you know, I have a lot of writing in here, but it doesn't really necessarily mean anything to me when I look back on it. I don't know why I highlighted that. It was very specific for the time. And I also find myself when I'm reading, I'm looking up things that I have looked, when I look them up and I read, you know, what does that mean or what does this word mean or what is this scripture about? I have actually looked that up before. So I thought, you know, it would be good to obviously keep this Bible. This is my Bible, will be forever. Um, but what if I had a Bible that I could take more notes in to help me with that contextual, historical, um, you know, defining words, things like that. So, introduce this. This is a New King James interleaved Bible. It's a journaling edition. It's hardcover. Um, it is specifically for taking notes. And what interleaved means is that, I'll just flip open, Every other page of this Bible is blank so that I can take detailed notes on every other page. So as I'm reading scripture, so here in Joshua, as I'm reading about the land of Benjamin and I'm learning about what do certain words mean, what do contextual things mean, how does this tie to other scriptures, I can actually take those notes here so that in the future, when I come back to this scripture, I can use this Bible as a reference to what I've already looked up and learned to remind myself. And I think that's just a continual process, at least it is for me, to continue to look and read and learn. So I have started using this, and I'll show you just, um, you know, I. I started in the beginning. Um, in the Old Testament with Genesis, I started using this. And so this is the first page. Um, and it's, I'm obviously moving very slowly. Um, but, you know, just really studying the words in the scriptures, um, defining certain words. So the different names of God that are used just in the first uh, chapter of Genesis 1. The first section of Genesis 1, the names that are used, um, what are different uh, contextual clues, timelines. Uh, I have this great printable tipped in here um, from the Bible Project, which actually diagrams out, um, you know, the, the first seven days and kind of the construction as it was told from the Hebrew, you know, ancient Hebrew perspective, um, all of that. I've moved on to the second side um, and I've got, you know, I'm just doing some work here. I've got a system that I'm testing out and I think it's working for me, but I really want to continue to to go down this path. I really want to continue to do this because I am really enjoying the deep study that I'm that I'm getting out of this and being able to capture all those notes in a place where I can constantly come back and reference them. So from my quiet time, this is what my quiet time is morphing into versus using a 30-day scripture reading, you know, verse a day type reading. Um, I will share a bit more about the actual, the, the color coding, you know, what do sticky notes mean, um, you know, what do, what do the different highlights mean, things like that. I will share a bit more about that in a future video, uh, but really just wanted to introduce this as you know, kind of how I'm spending my quiet time. So that is the new, um, the new Bible that I'm using and how I'm going to be spending my quiet time. But that also leaves things like gratitude and um, sermon notes and family devotion notes and prayers, things like that, um, still, you know, up in the air. So for that purpose, I will introduce this guy. So this is a 12 month January through December uh, spiral bound planner from Erin Condren and it is the vertical life planner. Um, so I actually got this off Amazon, not off the Erin Condren website. Um, I will have this link down in the description box below. I bought this as well as two spiral bound dot grid Erin Condren notebooks, um, also in the seven by nine size. And the reason I did that is because I knew I wanted to somewhat frank and plan this guy. Um, so I am not using this as a daily planner necessarily. Um, 
Um, I'm not planning any activities or events in here. Um, but I knew I wanted to have the weekly pages, the monthly pages, as well as note pages, at least one for every day. So Erin Condren doesn't sell a planner like that. Hobonichi cousin would work. However, I really don't like the paper. I, I'm not a fan of the Tomoe River paper in the Hobonichi cousin. Um, and it just, I don't know, the size is weird to me. I really wanted something that I could flip back on its side, you know, for like this and easily be able to write on. So the Erin Condren really fit the bill. And when I bought these on Amazon, they were on sale. I don't know if they'll still be on sale, but I'll have them linked down in the description box below. Um, so what I did is I took apart the coil. I considered filming the process of doing that. However, I am not very good at doing that. <laughs> it is very ugly when I have done this before. I have taken apart an Erin Condren and kind of re reformatted the pages, added in things, took things out, and then recoiled it. And it is really ugly when I do it. But there are some great videos out there, and I will have a couple of them linked down below that I actually use as a reference for how to uncoil an Erin Condren and put it back together. And really, I think it would work for any spiral bound planner, um, uncoiling it and then recoiling it in a different order that you want. So I'll have those videos linked down in the description box below from people who do it in a, in a much prettier way than I do. Because when I do it, it's ugly and I get very frustrated and sometimes say ugly words. Um, so what I did is I took this apart and I put it together in the order that I wanted. I've just got some sticky notes stuck here in the front section. Um, there is a year at a glance, which I don't know how I will use. I would love ideas from you. So knowing that this is a faith journal, not a planner for me, how would you use the year at a glance? Now, you know, through through here, these are 2021, so that's kind of useless space. I could actually cover it up with something else, but then the full year of 2022 is listed here as well. Uh, and then there are these boxes, which I don't really know what to do with. There are 12 of them, um, and, you know, like, if it was a planner, I might use them for goals or for, like, special events or future logs, something like that, but... Um, it's not a planner. It's faith journal. So I'm not really sure what to do with these. So for these two pages, for the year at a glance, and for these 12 boxes, I would love your ideas. For a faith journal, what would you use these pages for? Leave those down in the comments below for me. All right, and then we get into the months. So what I have here, I've started using, and I will use on every monthly page. Here's a blank monthly page. I am logging gratitude in detail. These boxes are plenty big enough for me to log gratitude in detail. And I actually have a couple of stickers because I don't have very lengthy you know, gratitude things every day. Some days are just kind of just normal days. And it's not that I'm not thankful. It's just nothing really stood out to capture. So I do have some stickers. And in some cases, like this one, I actually took up two days. Um, so I, I had a lot to say there. So I took up two days. But just using this monthly space as a gratitude log to really come in and write in detail when something happens that I'm really grateful or thankful for, um, to really capture that in detail. And I love doing that first thing in the morning in my quiet time. I get up really early, like five in the morning, um, 4.30 or five before anybody else in the house is up. I sneak down and tiptoe and get my coffee and then come back up um, and sit down to have my, um, my quiet time. And I start here. I start with gratitude for the previous day. So I'm reflecting back on the previous day and I'm really spending time writing what I'm thankful for. So that's how I'm using the monthly pages. There is this dashboard page for every month in the Erin Condren, and I don't know what to use this page for either. Um, I actually started using this, I, I should say, for January. I didn't start using this planner at the beginning of January. I actually just picked it up um, this week and then have spent this weekend, uh, which we are in, the 21st and the 20, uh, 22nd, um, I have spent this week sort of going back and pulling from my planner the things that I wanted to write about. Um, so as, as I get ready to head into February, I'm really curious about how to use this page. So there's the big box here. There are four bullets here. There's a little lined box here and then a dot grid area here. I'm not really sure how I want to use this because 
again, I'm not following a specific scripture plan. I am really just opening up and reading and taking notes, um, you know, get, capturing all that I'm learning and researching as long as I can and going as far as I can beginning in Genesis and working my way uh, through. Now, I don't know that I'll do it chronologically all the way through. I may, when I finish Genesis, I may skip to like Romans or, you know, Acts or something like that, a different book. But I'm not really following a specific plan, and I'm doing that on purpose because I did consider doing, you know, read through the Bible in a year, but I really don't want to rush. I really want to take my time to research. And if it takes me the entirety of my morning quiet time one day to cover two verses, I'm perfectly fine with that because it means I'm really digging deep and, you know, capturing that information. If I can get through a whole chapter or a whole book uh, in a morning quiet time, great. Uh, I'm not really limiting myself or putting myself on a schedule. So I wouldn't have a, a monthly plan for what I need to read and get through to be able to check off. So I don't know what to use this page for. So this is another area where I would ask for your thoughts and insights. Let's share with each other. For your faith journal, what do you use on this type of page? What, what does your dashboard look like? So I would love to hear ideas about that too. All right, and then we get into the weekly pages. And this is, again, I went back and captured the, these items. We do a, a devotion in my household. Uh, my husband leads the four of us, um, myself and my two daughters, in a devotion every week. And it's sort of a five-day devotion um, with some, you know, homework and, and prayer for the week and stuff like that um, at the end. Uh, there are Bible verses for every week. And so I like to take notes of that and kind of, to capture the discussion we're having uh, as a family, those are really precious moments to me <laughs> because, you know, my oldest daughter is getting ready to move away and so all of that is about to change. So I really like to capture that and that is how I'm using the weekly pages. I am capturing my prayers and, you know, what the, uh, here's one that I've set up for, um, for next week, you know, how, having the sort of the theme of the devotion, the Bible verses for the week, and then going through each day and making notes about what we talked about and, you know, what the discussion was and then any prayers that I have. That's how I'm using the weekly pages. I added in notes pages for enough for one a day. Um, the way I'm using this is when I finish studying in the morning during my quiet time, I will actually write out my prayer um, at the end of that quiet time, just what reflecting on what I read, what I learned, you know, how God is speaking to me, uh, questions that I have, raising up concerns, you know, things like that, praying for my family. Um, and I think the difference of the notes I'm taking in this uh, study Bible, this this journaling Bible, and what I am writing here is what I'm writing in the journaling Bible is really notes that will apply regardless of when I pick this up. So it's not specific application of what I'm reading to today. It's more history, context, you know, definitions, you know, insights about God's character, um, you know, what the story, the overarching themes of the story, things that are going to apply no matter when I pick this Bible up versus what I'm writing in the journaling pages here is specific to today. It's application for right now. What is God telling me right now? And what am I praying back to God about that scripture? So that's what this section is. And that's really it. So I've got the monthly page, the weekly pages, and then a journaling page for each day that I'm using, you know, to capture prayers at the end of my study. So that's an update on where I am with my faith planning and how I plan to um, continue using a faith journal and studying the word in the month of February. Um, now, I know you might be thinking, gosh, Planet Annie, you just went to digital planning. What the heck? Um, and, you know, here's the thing. I love digital planning, and you're going to keep seeing that in my personal planning and work planning, things like that. But, you know, for all the reasons I talked about, I really needed to go more analog uh, and really put the word 
before the world. And for me, my iPad represents the world because it's all the notifications and work is there, you know, work emails are there, um, all my other planners and tasks and to do are there. And I just needed some separation and some space from that to protect the quiet time that I devote to studying God's word and spending that time with God every morning. So I would love to hear from you. Have you ever used a journaling Bible? And do you have ideas for me for what to include in some of those pages that I haven't quite figured out what to do with yet uh, in this planner? I would love to hear your ideas, your questions. Leave me some comments down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to Plan and Annie for more content like this. And as always, thanks for planning with me.